Welcome back to Unified English Braille, an introduction, part four, um, moving right along with the series. Today we're going to talk some more about contractions and a few other things. Initial letter contractions are what UEB calls the dot five, dot four five, dot four five six contractions that we had before. And you'll notice that um, all of those dot configurations are prefixes. There are dots on the only on the right hand part of the cell. So we've been using prefixes just like we've been using modes all along. We just didn't necessarily call those them those things. And UEB is much more formal about it. Just for the record, um, then the, the Braille reader knows that anything encountered on the right-hand part of the cell means read what's coming next a little differently. So here we are with initial letter contractions. We can use them as a word sign wherever the letters they represent occur, except for specific provisions given in the next few screens and unless other rules limit its use. That's always the, um, I don't wanna say cop out, but that's what I'm going to say for, for UEB. So we need to know those other rules. So some examples that we will see in UEB using initial letter contractions are sword. Again, this is not sword. The dots four five W is not the contraction for the word word. It is the contraction for the letters W O R D, and that will help us a lot when we're trying to read and transcribe in UEB. So it's sword, father-in-law. Um, of course, father is as it's always been. Notice again that in there is standing alone because it has a hyphen before and after it, so we can use the contraction in that uh, hyphenated compound word. Knolls we can use, lordosis, we can use the contraction for L-O-R-D, not lord, L-O-R-D. Partake, P-A-R-T, parterre, some French word, and houghton, we can use the O-U-G-H um, contr O-U-G-H-T contraction, even though it's pronounced Houghton, because the pronunciation doesn't matter anymore. And here we have a but section, and you just kind of have to know how to pronounce these things and the rules that go with them. Some of them are just um, seemingly arbitrary. The, when the UEB committee was going through things, they would discuss these words, and if a, a Braille reader said yes or no, that was the way it stood. So. Um, uh, we'll go through this list and see what we can fi find out. So Dayan, I think is how you pronounce that. It's a city somewhere as well as Sande. You do not use D the D-A-Y contractions in those instances for various reasons. Uh, Lucknow, I think is um, a city in India maybe. So we don't use the K-N-O-W contraction there. Chlordane, we're not using L-O-R-D. Chemotherapy, not using M-O-T-H-E-R. Parthenon, we're not using P-A-R-T. Where error, we're not using um, the contraction for where, W-H-E-R-E. But wherever, we do use the contraction for ever, as we'll see in a bit. Not the one for where. And Dworkin, we're not using W-O-R-K. One group of initial letter contractions is the uh, dot four five contractions that we used to call them before. Uh, upon these, those, whose, and their, we can use them whenever its meaning as a whole word is retained. Had, we can use whenever the H, or the A, rather, is short, unless other rules limit its use. So we have two words that were always in hot debate in the old code, uh, whether we could or could not use the H-A-D, had, contraction. But in UEB, as long as the A is short, we can use it. So Haddock and Hadji have the H-A-D contraction. E-V-E-R is used when the stress is on the first E. It doesn't matter whether it's ever or ever. We can still use that contraction for that. When the and, um, but we can't use the contraction when the letters are preceded by an E or an I, and that will make sense as we see in a moment. So a severate, um, we can use the E, V, E, R there. We can use Everest, um, in the word Everest. 
We can use it now in fever. Again, the pronunciation is not the deciding factor in this case. And Severn, I think, is how you pronounce that. Unilever. I don't know where they come up with these words for the exa examples. Uh, but believer, you see, it starts with um, an I before the E-V-E-R, and so we do not use the contraction there. And that makes sense. That would re really destroy it. That would be really ugly trying to um, decipher that. So if we have um, something like uh, you know, something that, like believer, I'm trying to think of another word off the top of my head, but I can't. So we would not use it if the um, EVER is preceded by E or I. And when you see words that have that situation, you'll know instinctively not to use the, the EVER contraction. Here a name, we can use them whenever the letters are pronounced as one syllable, unless other rules limit its use. So we're going to start seeing them in the words like atmosphere and sphere. Again, you, the pronunciation is not supposed to be the deciding factor. So as long as it's H-E-R-E -E and it's all in one syllable, we can go ahead and use that contraction. O-N-E, this one will sound convoluted at first. We can use the letters pronounced when they are pronounced as one syllable or are in a word ending with the letters O-N-E-Y, like money or honey. Or if they're in the words honest or monetary, or they're derivatives, like honestly or dishonest. However, do not use the contraction when the letters O-N-E are preceded by the letter O, or when other rules <laughs> limit its use. So that sounds like a lot of if, mights, and maybes, but honestly, <laughs> no pun intended, we did this all along in the EBAE code. We just didn't realize that we were breaking the rules because we were so used to it. Here in U UEB, they're actually, they're actually saying it as a rule, and so it sounds very twisted and turned and around, but this is what we've been doing all along. So we can use um, the word um, O-N-E contraction in baloney. We would not use it in boon, though, because it's preceded by an O, so th that makes sense. So those are some examples of when we can and cannot use the O-N-E contraction. It's really not as difficult as it sounds. It's just that um, we were, again, we were breaking the rules before without realizing it, and now it's become official in UEB. S-O-M-E, used when the letters form a syllable of the basic word. So we will see S-O-M-E used in chromosome, because again, it's not the contraction for the word sum, it's the contraction for the letters S-O-M-E. T-I-M-E, used when the letters are pronounced the same as the word time. Simple enough. U-N-D-E-R, used except when preceded by the vowels A or O, like uh, laundry or flounder. Of course, we would use um, different contractions in those words. We understand that. And when the letters UN form a prefix. So if you had a word that started with UN and then the root word started with DER, we would not use the contraction for UNDER, such as the word um, underived. We, we would not use the contraction for UNDER. We would only use the contraction for ER. Okay, that's it for the initial letter contractions. Final letter contractions are the ones that have um, dots four, five. Are there any others? Um, again, we're not using dot six N or dot six Y anymore, so we have fewer final letter contractions than we did before. We can use them when they follow a letter, a contraction, or a modified letter, or a ligature letter, unless other rules limit its use. So again, a final letter contraction must follow a letter of some kind. It cannot follow indicators or symbols or anything else. There must be a letter before it. So some examples where we start seeing them uh, used in different ways in UEB than we're used to. Creation, we don't have the uh, A-T-I-O-N contraction anymore, but we still have T-I-O-N. That frees up E-A, so we're going to use the E-A contraction and then uh, T-I-O-N. In Congress, we can use the O-N-G contraction there. Rationally is going to look kind of stretched out to us at first. Uh, we have A-R-A, -A, then T-I-O-N, and we're not using A-L-L-Y anymore, so we have to spell that out. 
mongoose, we can use ONG even though it goes across syllables. Just to emphasize the point, again, we cannot use final letter contractions after a capital's indicator or a terminator because those things are not letters. So just be aware of that. And one tiny little rule, do not use ity in biscuity, dequity, fruity, hoity-toity, or rabbity if you should ever come across those words. And another little obscure rule, but it's one that we had before. Do not use N-E-S-S -S contraction when the feminine ending E-S-S -S is added to a word ending in E-N or I-N. So if you have chieftainess, you would not use N-E-S-S, -S, you would use I-N. Citizeness, you use E-N instead of N-E-S-S. -S. And same for heatheness, we would use the T-H-E contraction because um, that wins over E-N there. And we do not use N-E-S-S. -S. Okay. Moving on to a, a bit of a different topic, we have abbreviations and acronyms. If the letters are pronounced separately in an abbreviation or an acronym, we break out the letters separately. Otherwise, we can go ahead and use contractions as long as we follow those contraction rules. So we've st touched on that a little bit already. We would use um, IT instead of X for internet technology. We would use US, not just U to stand for US, meaning the United States or say um, World Health Organization, WHO, we would not use the WH contraction because that's not how we pronounce it. And then there are a bunch of obscure little rules, but there are a lot of them, and so I'm just going to touch on them. If you ever come across these situations, you can go ahead and study them for yourself in the code book or some other um, course that goes more deeply into this sort of thing. So we have um, things about what I'm doing now, actually dialect, lisping, speech hesitation, slurred words, vocal sounds, follow contraction rules, whatever those are. So if we have could, uh, we, it means to mean could have, the rules say that we can use the CD contraction in there to mean could, so we're going to have, go ahead and use that. Maybe, or however you say that, um, you could use the double B contraction. For stammering, we have the added component of needing to take into consideration grade one mode and so we need to know thoroughly grade one mode rules. Um, in the old code if we had stammering on either side of the hyphens we needed the same dot configurations. We do not need that in UEB. So if we have beware before we would need to um, probably spell out WH and then use ER contraction, I believe, we would have to make sure that on either side of the contraction it was the same thing. Whereas in UEB we can have WH on one side of the hyphen. In fact, we need that because otherwise WH would be standing alone and we would read it as the word which. So we spell out WH hyphen and the other side of the hyphen we do not need to follow suit. We can go ahead and use the contraction for where. You, we have um, Y's standing alone, spaces on one side, hyphen on the other for the first one. Um, so that needs a grade one mode symbol indicator. Then the middle Y has a hyphen on either side. Again, standing alone, we need the grade one symbol indicator. The last Y, we want to mean the word U, and so it is standing alone, and so we are going to read it as U because there is no grade one symbol indicator there. The final example, the but, we have uh, B, it's not standing alone because th even though the ellipsis comes after it, there's not a space after that ellipsis, there's a, a word. So we need to have, uh, so we do not need a grade one symbol indicator there because the B, first B is not standing alone. After that though, we can't just use B for, to mean the word but because the ellipsis comes before it. So we need to spell out the word B-U-T. If you happen to have fragment, fragments of words, you follow contraction rules. So if we have, uh, tell me what, we, we cut off on the WH, just as we saw on the previous screen, if we had WH hyphen period, there are spaces on either side of that symbol sequence, and so um, that would be standing alone. We would read that as which. We don't want that, so we need to spell out WH. Then we have T-I-O-N, um, following a hyphen. We can't just say, um, that's five, six, N, because again, final letter contractions must be followed by a letter. So we, and a hyphen is not a letter, so we need to spell out T-I-O-N. 
medial punctuation, meaning punctuation that's in the middle of a symbol sequence. We have that a lot these days with all of our strange grammar and whatnot. Um, medial, medial punctuation and indicators follow contraction rules. So we have, um, there's no rule saying we can't use WRD when it follows or precedes a capital indicator. So we can go ahead and use that. And of course, a capital P in the middle of the word doesn't affect anything at all. If you have omitted letters, be very aware of your grade one mode rules and any other contraction rules that might need to be applied. So if we have T hyphen N, those letters are standing alone because they have spaces and hyphens on either side of them. So we need grade one indicators um, before them. The same for S dash, that da S would be standing alone so, or is standing alone. So we need the grade one indicator there. And then we have N dot 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 as CE. And so the N is not standing alone because it even again, even though it has a, a ellipsis after it, there's a CE directly after it, not a space. And so the N is not standing alone. Spelling, um, we follow grade one mode rules. So we have, um, I think we had an example of this already, where we have letters separated by hyphens, capital letters rather. And we could put grade one symbol indicators in front of each of the, the ones that need it, not in front of I, because we never need an indicator in front of an I. But that's a lot of switching and symbols and indicators and whatnot. So we're going to use the grade one word indicator instead. And then um, the entire symbol sequence then is understood to be in grade one mode. Syllabified words, again, follow contraction rules, whatever those are, but um, be aware of hyphens and spaces and that sort of thing. Okay, another new topic, just very briefly. Modified letters. Modified letters are those with accents or other marks, um, like pronunciations, which are still accent marks. There are many new symbols, lots of them. The generic dot four that we've been using before is no more. We're not using that at all ever to mean an accented letter. We use these new symbols for the occasional word in English text. We're not going to use it for foreign language study. Those symbols that Banna has established in foreign language, we're still going to use when we're talking about Spanish 101 or something like that. Or if you're reading something French lit or pronunciations, we are not going to um, um, use Excuse me. In pronunciations, we, we um, will use it, but not for international phonetic alphabet. So these modified letters um, we use for um, the occasional English word in, in or foreign word in a English context, like cafe or deja vu or something like that. Senor. So we have I just showed a few of these. Again, there are many more in the code book. So um, be sure to look those up if you should need them. And that's all I have for you today. Uh, see what you can do with the uh, practice. And I hope to see you back for session five.